then. Welcome everyone to our July PL Andres All Hands meeting. Um, similar agenda as usual, we'll have a quick working group update of the various different teams in the network and what we're focused on. Um, we have a lot of awesome spotlights today, and then we'll have a deep dive on the PORUP days, um, what, which happened, uh, there was one that happened last week, I guess, and then one happening next week at uh, in Paris at ETCC. So stay tuned for that. As a quick reminder, um, PL Andres Working Group works within the Protocol Apps Network. Um, we are working on making the internet built on top of uh, user empowering primitives that helps lock the net open and make it a great foundation for some amazing breakthroughs coming in the next couple of years or couple of decades, uh, depending on who you ask. A lot of our work uh, centers around IPFS, LibP2P, and Filecoin, um, but also focuses on many new exciting breakthroughs in computing um, that are growing out of this awesome collection of, of humans and teams that make up the Andrews Working Group. Um, so our mission is to scale and unlock new breakthroughs in IPFS, Filecoin, LibP2P, and related protocols by driving breakthroughs in protocol utility and capability, scaling network native research and development, and stewarding and growing open source projects, networks, and communities. These are some of the amazing teams and projects that make up the PL Andres Working Group across a whole range of really exciting um, different initiatives. And this is our focus for 2023, <laughs> working on uh, stewarding critical systems, growing the network of amazing humans contributing to these efforts, uh, working on robust storage and retrieval for um, IPFS, Filecoin, and beyond, and then enabling compute over Filecoin state and data. Made a lot of progress through this, see a lot of green check marks already, which is really amazing, um, and have a couple of really exciting um, additional projects that we're continuing to work hard at. Um, and we'll be uh, continuing to flush out a, a whole list of launches for Q4 uh, that we'll maybe share in our in our next Andres All Hands. Um, some of the really awesome big bets that we've been working on um, over the past you know, year and a half or so. Um, lots of amazing work on large scale data onboarding in Filecoin. There's been some uh, amazing work across a whole number of teams, helping clients onboard, improving the tooling, improving robustness and reliability, um, both of storage and retrieval. And we celebrated last all hands crossing an exabyte of uh, total active data stored in Filecoin, which is super cool. Um, a lot of work on Saturn as a Web3 CDN for enabling fast retrieval of data on Filecoin, but also caching uh, Web3 data around the world, um, making it super accessible and easy to use. Um, really exciting progress if you're joining us in, at ECC next week around compute over data networks and being able to em enable um, compute L2s to add additional utility to Filecoin data storage um, to unlock kind of composable uh, data transformation and um, utility going forward. And then also a lot of awesome work on interplanetary consensus or IPC. Um, helping unlock these breakthrough new applications to build on top of Filecoin and, and have a solid blockchain foundation for um, web scale applications that can store their data in Filecoin, utilize compute over data networks, and go far beyond that with the scalability they need in this space um, to, to really expand, utilize regions, um, and interoperate across many different subnets. Uh, we have crossed the end of Q2. We are officially in Q3, welcome to July. Uh, and so we are going to grade our OKRs from last quarter. Um, I soon jump jump in if I'm supposed to let people do that individually. Um, I think we can go either way, Lauren, um, Matthew, Steve, I think we are, we all, we are all can, ready to go, but you can go also- Go for it then. Uh, time. Um, I guess then- I'll jump in. <laughs> so, um, with our very sophisticated OKR algorithm, we determined on the keep critical systems running, growing, releasing, and scaling and secure. Um, we were of at a 0.6 on this goal on um, unlocking reader privacy via double hashing on DHT and IPNI. We have um, we had to scale back this goal for the DHT side due to other priorities, and the work is bumped into Q3 on the IPNI side. Um, we accomplished this on the server side. All requests are stored now, double hash. All um, CIDs are stored double hash in the IPNI. All requests are being answered with this double hash store. Um, when, when the IPNI receives SIDs, they are hashed at that point, and everything comes out as encrypted as well. 
So it really, the remaining work happens on the client side and there is a proposal on what the actual format would look on the client side right now, open if anyone has to com wants to comment on it. On the Filecoin network improvements goal, we did land uh, two network improvements that were pretty significant in NV19. There was FIP60 setting market deal maintenance interval to 30 days and FIP61, the window post grindability fix. And then the third achievement we've achieved right at the end of the quarter and is continuing into this quarter is doing state profiling of the chain itself. Steve, go ahead. Excellent. Yeah. So on hyperscaling, accelerating the talent and teams contributing to the stack, PL stack, I should say, protocols uh, for hosting events. You know, we did have four events successfully hosted. We didn't quite hit our numbers in terms of attendees, um, both in real life or asynchronously. Um, but you know, that, that that that's where we are there. That's why we didn't give ourselves a full full one there. Um, and on the second item re regarding Boxo, um, you know, there are getting close to around 300 packages depending on Boxo at this point. But um, and some of these are IPFS implementations that are moving SIDs around. But many, if maybe not all, or if not all of them, are projects that were already previously depending on these IPFS repos and that were consolidated into Boxo. So don't want to take credit there. And we we didn't we haven't identified cases yet where uh, projects were previously using Kupo or had forked it, which have now switched over. So this this endeavor is still ongoing. But we haven't hit, hit the goal, um, and as a result, not going to claim the key result was achieved fully yet. Can we go next, Matthew? Yep. On uh, scaling data onboarding and, of course, getting the data back out really quickly. Um, last month, we talked about how we made a strategic decision to change some of these goals. So we still have the KR here of five plus Saturn customers onboarded. If you recall from last time, we made an intentional shift to focus on customer number one, which is Rhea and getting it right. Um, the team has been making really great progress on that. We're moving forward on really honing in on correctness. Uh, on the last bullet here, the one thing I want to note is I gave it a 0 0.6 with an asterisk because while we have not reduced our centralized costs by switching to Saturn yet, the teams have all made really amazing progress in cutting our centralized Web2 infrastructure costs. In fact, in the last quarter alone, we cut another $5 million uh, from our annual spend. So from a numbers perspective, this is a 1.0. Uh, we're going to see more gains once we get the reasoning we thought we were going to get from here. But let's uh, move on. Ison. Thank you, Matthew. Great update. Um, on the computer with data and state of the things, upgrading Filecoin with new L2 capabilities, we had three main OKRs across FVM, IPC, and CAD. Uh, on FVM land, it's 0.9 because while we like overly reached uh, all the metrics here, except uh, only one of them, wallets, so in the number of uh, amount of field managed by contracts. Uh, this week we reached 3 million, which is great. And we have very ambitious goals for the upcoming quarter. Uh, unique contracts, uh, we are around 1400, which is again over a thousand. Uh, average transactions, um, as of today, we are around like 150,000 field average uh, transactions for the last 14 day average. Uh, this is a learning for us when we first launched and those numbers were super low. And when you look at the benchmarks, there are not very clear, easy benchmarks to look at. Uh, so we are definitely learning how to put into context certain numbers and setting more ambitious goals. Um, and then on the FEM wallets, with some uh, due to some entry needs gaps that we are uh, focusing on addressing this quarter, we are, as of today, a little over 100,000. We reached uh, over 100,000 this week. Um, while we exceeded most of the metrics, uh, given that we didn't know how to set them right ambitiously and we missed one of them, it's 0.9. Um, on IPC land, uh, there's a great update the team is going to share today. So I don't want, I'm slightly breaking the news, uh, but we reached that like a uh, great milestone uh, um, uh, during this week, uh, more, to be, more to become uh, later in this call uh, by the team. Uh, kudos to uh, IPC team. And on card side, uh, we reached this milestone in May, um, and uh, there are more to become that we will uh, about to share in Q3. Um, and David also will share more later in this call what we are uh, planning to do next week in Paris. So with all, um, all four is rounding up to 0 1.0. Awesome. And we have set ourselves some new ambitious goals for Q3. Um, so I'll let I'll let folks take it away again to, to share what we're going to be um, tracking ourselves on for the next three months um, as we dive into kind of the, the next check of work around these areas. 
Great. Um, the Q3 goal on keeping critical systems running. Um, the first one is relating to the IPFS gateway and actually having transparency in what the errors are. So we actually can see what's going wrong and then try to address those. Transparency is the first step. On the Filecoin side, um, we want to land three high value FIPS that actually improve the Filecoin economy. So some velocity there on um, improvements for efficiency and economy. And then the second two KRs relate both to getting more community members running um, important infrastructure. We want um, more community run bootstrap nodes and community run window post disputers and consensus fault detectors. So we'll be creating a lot of the software to enable that and working with the community to get those running. Steve? Great, yeah, so again, around uh, gro growth to the stack. Um, yeah, so first one here about Crypto Econ Lab, you know, continuing on their, their great trend of being uh, self self sufficient and self self funding. Uh, so that's what item number one is about. Um, you know, DRAND is also moving into similar you know, similar territories and getting uh, validation on their product market fit, uh, getting that plan out there and how they're going to nucleate, et cetera, and some other key lighthouse customers validating it. And then the third here, uh, you know, we, we ran into this one recently at you know, with Hack at HackFS, right? Users think they can author content in their browser with a JS sorry, JavaScript implementation of IPFS like Helia. And then we'd expect to be able to retrieve that content um, via a gateway like IPFS.io. Um, and that that isn't working today unless you start relying on preload nodes or pinning services. And so this is a cross effort of cross IPFS implementations and work in libp2p to pull that all off, um, which is a kind of a golden path use case that we expect people to run into, which we want to get nailed out and working seamlessly. On data onboarding land uh, with project motion, they're going to be looking to get two or more third-party integrations up onto this new and easier way to do Filecoin integration. Uh, we're also going to be concentrating on SPs in the four to six parent petabyte range, uh, helping them get unsealing for retrieval working correctly. Uh, one that I just mentioned in the previous things as uh, on Project Rea, we are going to go to get to 100% of IPFS IO gateway traffic being served through Saturn by the end of this quarter, big initiative. And in dot storage land, uh, the march of W3 up into the glorious land of production, uh, powerful, having 100% of historic uploads available in there and stored in Filecoin deals. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, and on computer or data and state land, uh, um, for FVM, uh, we have two main uh, goals. One is accelerate the FVM adoption, building on what we achieved on Q1 and launched. Uh, as you see, uh, we are targeting 15 million fail, uh, TVL uh, by the Phylama's definition this quarter, which is a huge goal. And we are hoping that it will get us to top 30. Um, as you know, top 30 depends on other uh, dynamics too, but that's the goal. We think we should be there. Uh, on the number of wallets, that is still a very important metric that we are carrying uh, from last quarter. Uh, this quarter, we are aiming to get to 200,000 wallets and users. And then last, the unique contracts, which is a great representation of how many unique teams, how many unique projects are being deployed on FVM. We are targeting 2,500. Uh, and the second big goal for FVM in around our product and engineering platform capabilities we are really working on um, unlocking uh, capabilities that's going to um, enable multiple runtimes and new use cases on FVM. And so this quarter, we are looking at data plus FVM use cases, uh, getting uh, at least four end-to-end -end data aggregators that's going to make it much easier for developers to store data with Filecoin um, and deploy their programs, smart, co smart contracts. And uh, related to that, we are aiming to at least 2,000 storage deals being done through these aggregators on FVM, through FVM. Um, and then lastly, on platform end, um, some of the big, biggest milestones that we are hoping to achieve this quarter, non-malicious runtimes being securely deployed, demonstrating that we will be on track for multiple runtimes in Q4, uh, which is gonna help uh, many other teams, uh, including our big bets too, uh, to achieve growth um, and accelerate it. And then lastly, uh, Lotus Ethereum JSON RPC API uh, enabling transaction tracing. Um, on IPC implementation side, as you see, after uh, after reaching to big milestone this week uh, in Q3, um, we are aiming to launch robust and audited IPC implementation on Calibration Net. 
that is gonna demonstrate that we are on track for Q4 GA public launch and uh, sign up five prominent early access subnet dev teams to commit also allocate their engineering resources to build on IPC. And here uh, we have uh, CDN, uh, DeFi, gaming, storage, important verticals that we will be uh, aiming to target and achieve uh, commitments there. Lastly, on CAD side, um, we are planning to deploy live CAD testnet and demonstrate growth through uh, users, external users um, uh, on this testnet with 50 plus nodes uh, for the compute jobs, 1,000, at least 1,000 users, which is a very ambitious goal uh, for CAD testnet and 2,000 jobs submitted. Um, and we are hoping to be to demonstrate with our technical roadmap that we are going to be on track for Q4 uh, GA as well. Awesome. Super exciting, ambitious goal sets. If we hit 70% of this, I'm going to be pumped. Um, and I bet the whole ecosystem will too. So um, awesome work, everyone. And with that, I'll hand it off to IPFS. Yeah, I'll, I'll take this. So I, IPFS, we're making the web work peer to peer with content addressing. So content can be verified independent of the provider or the transport method. And so next slide here about some of our KPIs. You know, many of these come from ProBlab.io, but you can get all the details um, by hitting that uh, QR code. Um, not, not a lot of major callouts I want to make here. Um, a couple a couple of things I'll say on the right hand side, there is a slight uptick in DHT fine provider latency. The ProBlab team is investigating that. Um, so don't have anything to report on that yet. I would expect we will during our next uh, all hands, but that, that's undergoing. Uh, you will see a large IPNI latency drop or for the P9B uh, uncached case. So the, uh, the Bedrock uh, network, network indexing team did a lot, whole bunch of uh, internal query routing improvements, and they are now uh, seeing the net result of faster lookup. So great job to, the, to those folks. Uh, next slide on the protocol implementation highlights, you know, continuing to, you know, with Project Rea and, and other needs, you know, gateways are continuing to get a lot of investment. Uh, more to come on, more will be shared on this, but do want to note that all of the Sharnas tests that have been uh, accumulated, sometimes uh, learned the hard way in Kubo over the years, have uh, all been moved to this uh, gateway conformance project so that any gateway can be uh, tested as long as it exposes the HTTP, uh, sorry, as long as it has an HTTP endpoint conforming to uh, the gateway spec, we can hit it and test it. So that, that is all done. Um, the work for uh, partial car support within Trustless Gateways has also um, landed and, and shipped and is now being used in multiple IPFS implementations. With Kubo and Boxo, you know, we did now finally ship Kubo 0.21. That was talked about last all hands. There were some performance regressions and, and bugs that needed to get fixed. Uh, we've got those all handled. So the release is fully out the door um, with those features that we talked about then. Uh, Boxo itself, the kind of a launch milestone that we had set for ourselves is now fully done, done, done in terms of the re repo consolidation and archiving of around 30 repos has occurred. Um, you know, GoCar has been like moved back out of Boxo and we're just depending on the IPLD slash GoCar repo, which is important for users. And there was also some dependency uh, clashes that would occur if someone was using Boxo with some of the existing repos. And those have also been uh, addressed thanks to various folks involved. Um, yeah, and as you can see, uh, Boxo has a has a logo. So we'll, we'll be using that brand going forward. Uh, also, the, uh, I want to note the IPLD Explorer is working again. I know that's one of our main, if not only, visualization tools for IPLD data. Uh, so that is using Helia. It's no longer depending on JS IPFS or PL preload nodes. So um, if you had abandoned the tool or abandoned pointing people to use it because it didn't work, please uh, you know resurrect and, and try again because um, we've got we've got that working. And also want to call out that the community and maintainers have been involved in HackFS. Quite a few submissions were made. We added linked to the to the winners, and got, there was a lot of good feedback. Not all positive, of course, um, but certainly a lot in that direction. Uh, it was great to see some of the comments, particularly around Helia and the work that had been done on the documentation and examples being um, useful to see. In terms of stuff that's coming up, more gateway work around being able to um, signal how you want your blocks ordered within cars. Uh, so that'll be making its way into Boxo and the conformance tests. Uh, Companion MV3 launch is, is imminent. We're just wrapping up the last item so we can really be tracking the usage and, and, and metrics uh, and you know handling the migration path. Um, but there is, you can get the beta of that uh, extension if you'd like, and feedback is certainly welcome. 
uh, you, there's been a lot of, I think it's been alluded to before, but there's been a lot of work going on behind the scenes about the DHT and how we get it into, how we get it into a place where we continue to, uh, you know, upgrade it and support it, even as other content routing systems like IP and I are being in invested in. Uh, so getting that publicized uh, with proper uh, milestones, that roadmap will be coming out, um, you know, this month before, you know, before the next all hands. Um, and, you know, also just a lot of behind the scenes code cleanup to pull out the IPFS specific parts. There'll be a new Kubo release and, you know, the ProLab.io website, which has already been live for quite a while, but we've been doing fine tuning on that, that, you know, the V1 website announcement will be happening. And certainly we welcome folks to be checking it out and letting us know if there's anything you need from a uh, IPFS network, um, you know, metrics regard. Thanks. On to libp2p. Uh, okay. So libp2p is the P2P networking uh, library for uh, many applications. Uh, next slide, please. I have a minute here, so I'm only going to highlight a few things. Uh, Max put a lot of work into the P2P performance dashboards. There's great visualizations. Check it out at the link. At the latest community call, Iro showed off how they do NAT hole punching. Lots of cool discussion around quick and derp and NATs. Uh, we have a recording out on YouTube. Check it out. The next GoLib P2P release will enable smart dialing by default. That means that we'll have more efficient connections and more efficient use of network resources. For example, you won't start eight connections just to close seven of them half a second later. Uh, it already is shipped in V028. It's just by default off. JSLib P2P is a monorepo now. RustLib P2P has a big version 52 release with a lot of community contributions. And it includes one of my favorites, which is a web transport transport for use in browser WASM environments. libp2phdb has a new redrafted spec link in the slide, and we're going to define how HTTP resources are represented in multi-adders, also known as HTTP paths. All right, that's it. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Marco. Uh, we try to build a decentralized storage network that can get data in, data out, and then you get data computer over with. That's Filecoin. Next slide. Some quick network stats. Uh, the uh, total network uh, storage capacity is still over um, 10 exabytes. Uh, we can see that the growth of the network RBP is still slowly uh, decreasing. And these days, uh, as the network has some changes, I will talk about in the next slide. However, the data stored on Filecoin deals are constantly growing. We are at 1.19 exabytes, which is 10% of the network storage are now being uh, are now being used to store variable data. That's very exciting. Uh, next slide. Uh, some highlights uh, first get through the updates. Uh, we have launched a Filecoin State Viewer. We do have a spotlight later, so I don't want to go through that in detail, but it's gonna. It's one of the profiling effort that helps us better understanding what's going on in the Falcon state to make sure the network doesn't blow up uh, out of nowhere. We also released two Lotus releases in the uh, past couple of weeks uh, with a lot of like optimizations um, that has efficient DM execution lines, a lot of like SP software improvement, and also a critical thinking issue bug fixes uh, with the support from the P2P uh, uh, stored like Marco, uh, and we get this out of the way to start further so they keep uh, they can keep a high uptime node. Uh, the next one is extremely exciting. The Boost V2 was launched uh, with local index, uh, index data store, I believe, data store, I forgot. Uh, however, that means that like, Boost is now more, uh, more than ready uh, to be scalable and allow SPs to serve the increasing amount of retrieval requests more reliably. So congrats to the team uh, from the last update. Uh, pr people probably know the proof team and the Lotus Miner team has been working on synthetic poll wrap, and we are about to launch a butterfly test net for community member and seen as a service provider to testing um, this new proof uh, optimization uh, from the protocol level. Uh, we are also uh, working on integrating supranational PC2 binaries into Lotus Miner, uh, which will 
bringing 70% of optimization for the PC2 task for both CC sectors and data sectors, uh, which will reduce the cost for onboarding sector, uh, onboarding storage onto the Falcon network. I learned today that there's a retrieval bot with reputational score launched for the Falcon network. That means we have moved from getting data into the network, but also slowly become a storage network, have data out as well. So that's very cool. Again, this is all very new. And so like there's improvements like coming, um, but that's a good first step. Uh, following Ashton, I don't want to speak too much about IPC, but there are some like exciting you know, <laughs> updates coming on later on. There are some challenges in the Filecoin network today, so I, I want to briefly touch point on that. Based on the market and the whole uh, that whole you know blockchain that dynamic these days, we are facing some challenges as a storage network where we are having slower storage uh, capacity growth than two years ago. That it, that means the network is now below the base baseline maintain and. As a result, uh, it's causing lower block rewards uh, in general, and the storage provider who are providing service on the network are potentially facing some uh, sustainability like challenges. So there is a very active community uh, community discussion that is going uh, going on to end it identify the problem and trying to work together uh, together as a community to figure out some like uh, solutions to make sure the network is sustainable. So if you have any thoughts, please join in the community discussions. Alongside of the uh, overall token economies of the network, there are also a lot of a discussion around how Filecoin Plus uh, working on the Filecoin network. Uh, there's a lot of recent discussion on what is qualified as a data cap. Oh, sorry, fail plus, not fit plus. Working on FIPS too much these days, but it's Filecoin Plus. Uh, so there's a lot of discussion on the Filecoin network is like, is designed to be a foundation for humanity's most important information. Uh, the network is designed to incentivize useful storage for those data. Uh, so we want to make sure that incentive system is like effective and ready in the longer term, but in the short uh, term, um, but like in the immediate, like short term, there are a lot of conversation on what are the useful, what data set are, you know, considered useful for the humanity? How do we govern this uh, mechanism on choosing the variable data set to incentives by the network or the client should be paying for the storage. So there's a lot of interesting conversation going on in the field plus like channel. So if you have any thoughts on how Falcon should evolve on this perspective, please join in the um, discussion. There are a lot of opportunities that we're discovering as well as a result of the whole profiling effort with Falcon state and storage capacity and the Chrome modeling. Uh, there are uh, areas we can reduce the state size or the operational overhead within the Falcon protocol to potentially save operational costs from the storage provider, but also in the longer term to make sure Falcon is going to be scalable and sustainable in the longer term and without any surprises. So we will be focused on that, uh, I feel that in the next couple of weeks. That's it. Great to be doing lots of modeling and good that we're seeing opportunities. All right, now handing it off to our awesome spotlight presenters. Starting with me, Lou. Um, I am already in Paris, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing many folks from our community at various events uh, at at and around ETCC over the next week plus. Um, here is a, a list of some of the many exciting events where you can meet fellows from the PL Andres Working Group and beyond um, at all sorts of fun gatherings. So if you're going to be in Paris, stop by. If you're not going to be in Paris, send your friends. We'd love to meet them. Um, and make sure that you check out the recordings because many of these are also going to be live streamed and available. Um, Falcon Unleashed, uh, Crypto Econ Day, uh, Infra Gardens, Proof of Space Days. So definitely check out the recordings if, if you can't be there in person. Um, and very much looking forward to gathering the community together. Over to Peter. Hello. Uh, quick spotlight from IPDX. Uh, so uh, IPX, uh, we're uh, taking care of developer experience needs within IP source team and beyond. Uh, and uh, yeah, so as Steve already mentioned, uh, we did reached quite a big milestone uh, within Gateway Conformance project. 
so I'm not going to re reiterate that, but I'm just going to say how, how proud we are of this product and how quickly it became really key across PL within various initiatives. And that's all thanks to, to ownership that, that Laurent uh, provided there. And uh, yeah, so I just want to thank Laurent here. And if you haven't checked out gateway conformance yet and you're working around gateways, uh, please do. Uh, and another spotlight from IPDX is around GitHub uh, self-hosted. Oh, it does below. <laughs> uh, it's around GitHub self-hosted runners, uh, and we managed to reduce operational costs of that solution that we produced uh, by six times. So uh, we're really excited about that because it means that that uh, this product is much more well positioned uh, to serve as a solution to, to runners uh, bottleneck problems that we often see around, uh, around PLs. Uh, so uh, if you do experience that, please reach out, uh, we'll be able to help and uh, we'll be able to do it uh, more cheaply now. Uh, and if you're interested in more of our work for the, the next part of the year, our roadmap is up, so make sure to, to check it out. Thanks. Awesome, congrats. On to Micros for state size visualization. Hi, we're here to demo a tool for visualizing the Filecoin state. The motivation came from a large reduction in the state used by Lotus Nodes and PowerPoint snapshots in MB19. Uh, before MB19, we saw about 50 gigabytes uh, extra. And by using this tool, we found uh, where the data was being used. Uh, so we can visualize what happens and understand the network. Uh, this is a, a interactive chart, and we can use it for other things. Over to you, Mike. Awesome. Yep. And so this will be generated weekly and we'll get a Slack ping with an IPFS link that's hosting this data visualization and it'll let us continue to monitor the state usage that's in Filecoin. And we're really excited about it and excited about sharing it with you. There we go. Nikolai, tell us about Bifrost. Yeah. Hello from the Bifrost team. This month we extended our telemetry platform to support long-term log data retention. And now we store the IPFS uh, gateway access logs in Amazon S3, and this enables us and other teams to analyze the gateway traffic patterns without running uh, permanent expensive compute infrastructure. We already use Apache Kafka to ingest logs from all servers that we maintain, so we took advantage of this and rolled out an open source tool called Kafka Connect to handle the data archival and upload to S3. Now the stored data can be processed using most of the popular data analytics tools like Google Data Proc, Amazon Athena, or you can even use Python with Pandas. Uh, now, all of this enables us to provide a self-service platform for everyone within the organization who wants to perform any long-term analysis, like why is the gate, how is the gateway traffic affected by the NFT mania? Uh, and you can also analyze the content that the gateway serves. Um, you can find more information about how to access the dates on our public Notion page. And if you have any questions, reach out uh, on the Falcon Slack. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Eric. Everybody, <laughs> very excited to uh, announce that we've got DRAN Time Lock working on FVM in, uh, in an MVP form. So really pumped up about that. Um, Patrick and Yolan have been, have been working hard. Uh, to put this code together along with some fantastic help from the FVM team and the IPC team. So thanks very much. You folks know who you are. Um, we're really excited about this, enabling this primitive because it's going to enable more compute over data scenarios that involve uh, time locking files. So for example, uh, users can send time lock data into FVM that gets decrypted at a later point in time. Um, and it also enables some more sophisticated commit reveal interactions uh, including uh, Randau type randomness, rather. Um, and we're really excited about potential um, MEV prevention methods. So we're looking into that very closely. And um, overall, it's a it's a big step for us as a, as a small DRAN team. And we're really excited to be able to contribute to FEM success. Um, on top of that, uh, we'd also like, we've got a few demos here. Um, these are more end user demos. They're not demos of FEM. They're just to get familiar with time lock and pace lock in case you haven't already seen those. 
And then um, lastly, also a quick mention, uh, we have an event. Uh, unfortunately, this event is at the same time as Crypto Econ Day. So for those of you that aren't hardcore crypto economists, um, please come check us out over at uh, the Infra Gardens, which we're co-hosting with a bunch of great PLN partners. We have over 1,000 signups already, but we can only host 500 people at a time. So we're going to be sort of trying to manage things at the door uh, so that we don't overload the venue. <clears throat> um, but we've secured Molly and possibly Juan. We'll see. He's got a, as you can imagine, Juan's uh, schedule in Paris is uh, crazy busy. So, but thank you, Molly, for uh, being willing to join us for one of our panels. Much appreciated. And so we really look forward to seeing those of you who will be out in Paris with us um, and, and meeting some of you in person for the first time. So thanks very much. Glad to be there. Looking forward to it. Over to Vic. Hey, everyone. Um, as Jenny mentioned earlier, uh, the Falcon Network surged by across the baseline in February of this year, which has caused block rewards to decline, um, which is intended as per our hybrid minting model. Um, despite this, QAP growth remains high due to strong storage onboarding, um, which has resulted in a strong, uh, you know, in a strong base fee and consistent amounts of Falcoin locked as locked daily due to storage collateral requirements. Um, both of these factors have contributed to Filecoin's daily change in circulating supply hitting an all-time low this month. Um, some storage provider businesses are struggling in the current environment, but there are some encouraging signs, uh, particularly in the DeFi economy that can provide liquidity solutions for SPs, which is another added benefit of having you know, the FPM shipping in March. Um, these economic mechanisms are operating as intended um, and the baseline function will continue to incentivize healthy cooperative competition amongst storage providers uh, to onboard storage capacity and power to the network. But um, as you look ahead to the Falcon economic state later this year, uh, one thing to note is that part of Genesis Festival will end late in October. Um, and given current trends, uh, we think minting will likely continue to decrease as network rollback power decreases. Um, some good things on the horizon are protocol simplifications and cost optimizations can also help entice more onboarding. And uh, looking even a little bit further out, the baseline might also cross the network's quality adjusted power, um, which could provide additional storage onboarding incentives through decreasing storage provider collateral requirements. Um, so in summation, like at the moment, our assessment is that these you know, economic mechanisms are working as intended, but DL um, will always continue to monitor these trends as they, as they develop. Awesome. Thank you for the great graphs and for helping us all have visibility into this evolving economy. Over to David for some exciting news with Bravo. Indeed. Um, thank you all so much. Uh, it feels so lucky to be part of uh, so many great announcements. Um, uh, uh, for us, uh, we have our uh, uh, new launch relative to uh, Baka Yao. So for those that uh, have not kept up, um, uh, Baka Yao uh, is the open source platform that works in both um, uh, Web 2 and Web 3 scenarios. Web2 uh, uh, nucleated out into a company called Expanso, and we have been hard at work on the Web3 version of it. Uh, currently, depending on where you look, will be named uh, codenamed uh, Bravo or Lilypad. Uh, regardless, it is the Web3 version of Bacco Yao using you know, off-chain execution, uh, but scheduling verifiers and consensus. It will be built on top of uh, IPC, uh, it will offer solidity execution and trustless contract context, and it's being built by the same team that built Bacchia. Yeah. So um, uh, tons of deep Filecoin, IPFS, libp2p integrations, and so on. Uh, the status is uh, we have solidity support. We have IPC support as it stands right now, uh, as well as uh, Ethereum support on our testnet. Uh, and we have a running testnet. Uh, you can see the sample jobs there down in the right. The first jobs ever executed against our testnet uh, is from uh, a uh, application called Cowsay, which is where you provide a string and, uh, and so on. Um, uh, Bravo, Bravo Network quickly is, is the consensus layer that sits on top of Bacayao. And I'm happy to answer all these questions. I know it's very subtle. Um, our initial use cases are around generative AI, LLM, uh, Filecoin data processing, um, scientific computing, and so on. And we are very proud to announce that next week at ECC, we will be launching our 
very unstable but real uh, test net. So you can go try this yourself. Um, and we are really, really excited. Things have moved very, very quickly. Uh, we have many presentations next week and the week after. Um, and we already have stable uh, uh, modules for stable diffusion, S3, read and write, uh, wa deterministic WASM, and so on. So uh, lots of stuff moving very, very quickly. We would love your feedback, talks, so on and so forth. Uh, and we are very excited and, and expect to uh, have lots more announcements in, in the next coming quarters. Awesome. And if you have a little extra bandwidth and want to hack with some folks, there's even a uh, augment hack where you can hack around with the new testnet at ECC. So really, really hidden stuff live off the presses. And uh, we look forward to seeing your bugs. And to keep the exciting launch news rolling, uh, Alfonso, take it away. Hello, everyone. So I'm proud to announce that IPC is in mainnet. Uh, so yesterday we deployed the smart contracts of IPC in mainnet. So now you're able to spawn new subnets with uh, Solidity-based um, parents. This means that now you are able to deploy a subnet and interact send funds and exchange funds with mainnet seamlessly from your subnet. We put there, so if you want to start interacting with it, you can go to, I mean, go to IPC agent, install your IPC agent, and you just have to point to these two contracts that I just shared. I mean, I will share it in Slack so that they are copy pasteable. But with those pointing your IPC agent there, you will be able to deploy a, a subnet from mainnet. That being said, uh, strong, strong, we strongly agree to, uh, sorry, strongly advise to just uh, test it in calibration first, because this is an alpha release, which means that it hasn't been out audited and your file coins may be lost and we don't want anyone to lose their file coins. But either way, I really recommend everyone to just spawn a subnet, see how rough is our UX, give as much feedback as you can and help us build IPC. And thank you, George, for doing the slides while I was out of office. Thank you, everyone. Super exciting. Go play around with that as well. Um, and, and, you know, we have, uh, sh you know, fast shipping dependencies of IPC on mainnet and Bravo using IPC and all sorts of good stuff. So many things hot off the presses, um, all using each other. And now over the to the team for Proof of Space Days Deep Dive. Hey, hi, everyone. This is Max and Irene from CryptoNet. So we had port of day at PL last week, uh, 6th of July. Uh, we cover things like new research directions, improve of space, uh, security models, a survey of uh, previous efforts on proofs of useful space, uh, what changed since 2020. And we have this new website that just launched, proofspace.org, which is like an educational and outreach uh, website. Some stats, we had almost six hours of talks, conversations, and thanks to Solaris, shout out to them. Uh, we have now professionally produced individual talks that are available. Uh, we had 21 registrations, up to 40 participants. And yeah, the feedback was uh, really good. We had five over five and like good qualitative feedback as well. Uh, people reached out. So I'm going to pass over to Irene to talk about insights and outcomes. Thank you, Max. <clears throat> Sorry. So... I guess the main sites were, so first of all, we have uh, two uh, viable paths that we can implement in the short, medium term. One is about uh, uh, improving the existing uh, SDR parameters, for example, the retrieval speed, so going to hours, as is today, to maybe seconds, um, using VDF in combination with uh, the existing post uh, uh, especially winning post uh, protocols. Uh, the other viable path is um, re replace uh, SDR with something that we already know. Uh, for example, the NFC structure that was proposed uh, three years ago, something like that, with better actually parameters. So thanks to some uh, very recent research effort, we very likely can can have better parameter than what we we thought. And this again could give some uh, faster than than today uh, retrieval and other and other in general improve uh, status quo, also for security and other uh, and other efficiency measure like uh, for example footprint on chain footprint. Um, then on say in parallel 
for uh, more on the focus of medium long term, what we really understood is that we want uh, uh, not just seconds for, for speed, but maybe milliseconds. Um, and, and this last is probably going to be achieved with a parallel effort, a kind of uh, uh, parallel track that is uh, focused research on completely brand new proof of space and proof of replication construction. So leave the uh, SDR phase and more general graph labeling uh, uh, areas and find a new, new, new construction that can give uh, by default, uh, faster faster retrievability with better parameters. Um, this is parallel to resume all the ideas that we have that use the VDF. So VDF run is becoming every day more more real. Three years ago, was was hard to have like concrete parameters and testing and hardware. There was things that were were out of the picture. Today, this is changing, like every day is changing a lot. So the idea is that we want to resume all these ideas and maybe test them, test them and test them. Um, and last but not least, uh, what an outcome of it was very important from, from the part of the day is that, you know, maybe not, there is not one solution for, for all the applications. So it's very important to classify the storage application that where Filecoin, we want to see Filecoin active. We need to understand different storage uh, mediums, storage size, all these, uh, um, all these uh, um, concrete real world application need to be classified and we need to extract from the application, from the product point of view, which are the requirements, the, the uh, constraints even, the, that we want to put, that we need to have on the next uh, part of, um, and, and post construction, and we are going to work on this uh, with, with with bedrock and, and and other and other themes, of course. Um, next is the proof of space base. Max, do you want to present them? No, oh, it's fine. Yeah, you can also. So yeah, we're gonna have July twenty twenty one. Please join us. Um, so July twenty is gonna be a conference day in New Republic. And July 21 is going to be a workshops day and we're going to have a river barge just in front of Notre Dame. So beautiful location. And yeah, we have more than 50 registrations so far. Uh, yeah, the, the goal of this on top of alignment and like sprinting on the work uh, that you saw is also to onboard new, new engineers, new researchers into the space. And we already have quite a few students who registered. Um, so yeah, please join us. Awesome. Really great to see us making progress here. Um, I know the whole community would be really excited about new some of the new ideas that are bubbling out of these conversations around faster PO reps, especially ones that have faster retrieval as well, um, and enable lighter weight, lower cost ceiling uh, to boot. So uh, super, super awesome. Thank you guys for pushing on this and looking forward to seeing you at Proof of Space Days.